Top of the morning, Raider Nation. I'm Raider Dave here in the IE, recapping last night's game. Chargers beat the Raiders 30-27 to in overtime, and they get the big, the big touchdown by their run, young rookie quarterback in Justin Herbert. We got, we got a problem in the AFC West, man. We got a quarterback that is just rising up for that L.A. team, and we got a quarterback that's already won a Super Bowl, and he's killing it for the Kansas City Chiefs. The Raiders got to figure out something, man, because their red zone offense, if their offense is going to hang with Justin Herbert, and I'm just going to put Justin Herbert's name out there because he's balling, Patrick Mahomes, your red zone offense can't be a bust, John Gruden. You can't have late season collapses. You can't drop from 6-3 and three to 7-7. Seven and seven. Uh, That's a complete meltdown. Somewhere... There needs to be creativity in this offense. If they got to bring in a younger offensive coordinator, just somebody to mix it up a little bit. And we already know the defense, man, the defense is a lost cause, man. You got to get Wade Phillips in here ASAP. You got to do everything you can, once again, to build that legacy. So we're going to get into all this stuff. If you're new to the channel, feel free, hit that sub button, give Raider Dave some love. I will be right back after this intro. We're going to go through what's been going down with John Gruden, man, and what needs to change with John Gruden and his coaching resume. All right, so let's get into this, man. The ugly collapse of John Gruden, the hat trick. Let's just call it the hat trick. You know, they, they had the big story last night. You know what I'm saying? He's got the Oakland hat on, and they got to flip it to the Las Vegas hat. I'm going to call the hat trick the late season collapse, man, literally. I mean, going back to 1998, I know the Raiders had Jeff George pull up. A, as a matter of fact, Jeff George had a growing injury in that game, if you remember that Baltimore game. Uh, but the Raiders, they have a 7-3 and three start. I think Donald Hollis took over after that, and they finish 1-5. and five. 7-3 and three in 98, and they finish 1-5. and five. Uh, Once again, there you go. Dinger right there for 1998. 1999, a 5-4 and four start, a 3-4 and four finish. Uh, somewhat better, but uh, you go back. Let's go back to 2001. Because 2000 and, and, and two, I mean, 2000 was John Gruden, one of John Gruden's strongest years. He had a good defense, aside from the Tampa Bay year, that, that you know, the defense he inherited. But in 2000, he had a good defense. The Raiders were rolling. Gannon gets his shoulder freaking crushed or collarbone crushed by Tony Saragusa. But let's go back. Let's go forward to 2001, okay? Remember the Raiders finished 10-6? and six? In 2001, that was a 9-3 and three start. And I know there was a lot of bad calls. I'll never forget there were some bad calls that, that, that resulted in that. But the 9-3 and three start, the reason why... The reason why the Raiders played in the snow in the first place and had that horrible call with the tuck rule and all that was because of a 1-3 and three finish. This is just what's on his resume, and, and I'm not blaming him completely on that year because there was some horrible calls. They took that touchdown away from Jerry Rice, you know, you name it. There was there were some bad calls, but see, here's the fact. He finished 1-3, and three, they have to go play on the road, and the Patriots go on and become a dynasty. That's what happened there. Uh, you move up to uh, Tampa Bay when he was in Tampa Bay in 2003. Finishes seven and nine. The five and eleven team in 2004, the Tampa Bay team, four game losing streak to finish the season. Uh, 2006, the four and twelve team, he loses five of six of his last six games. I mean, 2007, they have an eight and four start. He has a one and four finish. Um, and then they and technically one in five because they ended up losing the playoffs. That was I think when the Giants beat them. The Giants went on and beat the Patriots on the Super Bowl, I believe that year. So, uh, 2008, a nine and three start, 0 and four finish uh, to get gives them a nine and seven record. Still a winning record, but 0 and four finish to close out the season. Then 2019, you guys already know, man, six and four start, and this team goes seven and nine. 2020 still remains to be seen, but we already know this team started out six and three. They are seven and seven now. We couldn't even get to eight and six last night. That would have felt a little bit better if this team could have got to eight and six. And once again, they were three and a half yards away from it in overtime. I mean, I mean, the Raider gods were working in so many different ways for the Raiders. I mean, you lose Derek Carr to a growing injury. You get Marcus Mariota who steps in, and he, I mean, without any reps and, and all that, you don't really see Marcus Mariota. You didn't see him in the preseason or anything, man, but he's able to uh, run this offense. They were able to adjust. They ran that RPO, you name it. However, it's those critical moments in a game. The critical moments is when you need to put points on the board. And it's been a concern of mine for the last couple of years. I've been saying it. I mean, their points, 
They're putting up more points on the board this year, but at the same time, the critical moments where you got to win the game, and that just didn't happen. It's an unfortunate si situation. It leaves a bad taste in all of Raider Nation's mouth. It, it's just an upsetting, sickening that this losing continues. I mean, this team was primed for a playoff position, uh, quote unquote. Easy finished for the, or you know, easy schedule to finish the season. Well, you're looking at it, looking at it right now, man. You are looking at it right now. It's a seven and seven team. I mean, you got the Dolphins coming up eight days from now, and that team. Now you just help them out with their playoff picture. You just help them out, and you know, if you look ahead to that Week 17 game, I mean, just look at it this way: the Raiders have lost four straight in Denver. They haven't won in Denver since 2015. I mean, when Cleo Mack had those uh, sacks in the second half, when we thought we were turning the corner, right? And here we are, man. We're talking about the offseason. That's what our discussions are going to be throughout the rest of the year. I mean, we're going we're gonna to preview some games. We're going to recap some games. But overall, a lot of us Raider fans, we already know what's coming, man. We're thinking about the offseason, man. Can you finish 9-7? and seven? You know, once again, I'm not going to be too optimistic about that, man. The Raiders have just dropped four out of their five last games. All winnable games. They barely, I mean, this could be an 0-5 run if they don't get that big play to Henry Ruggs at the end of the game. Aside from that, one little vent, though, with John Hussey. I talked about it a little bit in my live stream, man. He, the Raiders are 0-4 when he officiates the game. Boy, that guy was just a flat-out prick. I know Trayvon Mullen was was quite handsy and grabby man at, at the defensive back position and Trayvon Mullen struggled two games in a row uh so I'm not I'm not calling that on those plays but the double penalty like I've never heard a referee call a double pen I mean that's sticking it to a team and then there's so many plays where you see Nelson Aguilar he's getting hung on and grabbed and all that and they're not throwing the flag you saw Hunter Renfro oh my gosh man I was man I was just making sure his hands were moving and stuff after that hit because when he took that hit I was worried I was worried about that guy's spinal cord man because man the way he took that hit his head dangled he hit the ground I mean he was out but you knew he was unconscious but it was just I was just watching his hand movement when he hit the ground, man, just making sure that guy had some movement because it was a nasty hit, and we don't get the helmet-to-helmet, -helmet, man. You saw some helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits in this game, so we'll see how the league, you know, follows through with that. You know, that's all between them and players, you know, with the fines and all that stuff, but just an ugly game, you know, when it comes down to you know, getting the job done. You know, we can look back and say, hey, that was a pretty good game. It went into overtime. But really, I mean, the Chargers, they made a lot of mistakes. They gave the Raiders a lot of opportunities to win this game. Uh, Justin Herbert, man, he put that team on his shoulders, man, and he got the job done, man. So I got to give him a ton of credit. And uh, Anthony Lynn, you know what I mean? He, he's been on the hot seat all year, man. And that guy, that guy gets a big win for his team. I think the Chargers, man, they lost like nine straight AFC West matchups or something like that. And the Raiders were riding that three game winning streak against the Chargers I was hoping they could get four game winning streak against this team and now here the Raiders man they're they're four and two or three and two in the division um you know they'll be lucky if they go four and two and after that's after starting three and oh in the division man this team could end up three and three in the AFC West horrible disappointing finish man I don't know what it is that is going on in that locker room but John Gruden it all falls on him and he's got to write this shit man he's got to figure it out and uh and I think some of that you know a lot of you guys are right man when it comes to ego man I try to always put egotistical stuff aside because I was just like look for the good in a human being and all that and I know e an ego there's nothing wrong with having an ego I'm not going to say you know the guy's egotistical or anything but at somewhere somewhere along the line Mike Mayock or Mark Davis has to get in his ear and tell him we need to get some rock star coordinators in here we need some better play calling on offense and we need some better coordination on the defensive side of the football we need somebody who can change this overnight and we're stressing for wade phillips he's showing interest do what's right for this team man do what's right for these guys man their career you name it you got you got a, one of the greatest tight ends in the league right now you got one of the better running backs in the league with josh jacobs you got an up-and-comer with henry ruggs you got a solid problem there at quarterback with Derek carr and marcus mariota um you got an offensive line i mean there's a lot to build on here and they got to figure it out, man. They got to figure it out and get this thing right and get this thing clicking, man, and get this team in the win column in the month of December, you know, especially because November, they were solid going into it, man. And then all of a sudden, like I said, it's those last six games. You just look at John Gruden's resume, man. It's late season collapse city, man. And 
it ain't and it, it ain't trending upward. I'll tell you that much. And then you factor in the injury with Derek Carr. You know they're gonna have to make adjustments on offense when it comes to the RPO offense. It looked like they ran a pretty good op- RPO offense overall, but however, they're still gonna have to make that adjustment and clean up what's going wrong in the red zone because. Even the week before, I think two of five uh, in the red zone against the Colts. I mean, and the I mean, just each team they play. I mean, you 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 can't lose to teams like the Chargers. I mean, the Chargers came into this thing, you know, beat down. I mean, I know they were coming off a win, but and you know, and as far as winning out and and whatnot, the, the, most of us that would be hopeful for a winning season, not finishing seven and nine like last year, somehow finishing nine and seven, maybe even eight and eight. Maybe they maybe they lose to the Dolphins. You know, and they go seven and eight, and then they go to Denver and they snap that losing streak that they have in Denver, and they get that win. The only reason I bring that up because the '99 season, remember, they got that big win on the road in Kansas City, and that kind of changed their season for the the following season. Because sometimes you can ride a win if you get that win at the right time at the end of the year. Just something to build on for next year is what I'm thinking, man. What this team could do in these next two games to build on for next year, because the off season basically has arrived for me as a Raider fan. So we'll just have to see what happens. But once again, John Gruden knows it. Us Raider fans, we know it. Heads need to roll, man, and they need to take action immediately, man. And it's not just the firing of Paul Gunther that needed to happen. There needs to be more cleaning of house moving into this offseason, man. And it's up to Mark Davis, Mike Mayock, and John Gruden. They got to huddle up, and they got to find that ultimate solution. So um, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day. I'm Raider Dave. We'll catch you again. I'm out. Peace.